Thank you. Let me, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak to you this evening. Um, as Malik had just stated, we've had an outreach program for um, several years. I think it even predated the time that I became the, the U.S. Attorney here. But Bob Prettyman in the back is one who really deserves a lot of the credit for um, organizing the activities we have in the faith-based community. Um, my own children, I'm in a mixed marriage. Uh, my children are of one religion. Uh, I'm, uh, I can't tell you my real practicing member of my own religion, but um, we have that. And uh, it, it's, it's distressing to see the things that you see um, or read about. Um, in Delaware, we have not had an actual hate-based crime prosecution out of the U.S. Attorney's Office um, in a considerable period of time, this is as far back as um, I surveyed in my office today. But as been stated, we saw what happened in Wisconsin in the, in the sick community. Uh, we see what happened in North Carolina. You know, we see, you know, we passed laws to, uh, you know, to protect uh, people, different beliefs, different persuasions. We have a lot of latent hate in America. Um, it's aimed at many different organizations, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Jews, um, whether you're gay, lesbians, um, whether you're anti-abortion. And it seems to be the segments in our society that to deal with their disagreements, they want to reach out and they hurt people. And they do it in the form of hate. Now, we did investigate and we were involved in the uh, incident that occurred in the center out on uh, 273. And that was determined to be apparently juveniles. Um, the federal government is very reluctant to be involved in the prosecution of juveniles. It's very rare. Um, we're not set up to do that really. Um, but we are vigilant uh, in these areas. And um, while we will prosecute any case uh, that comes before us, my hope is that we don't have any cases. But I'm not naive enough in approximately 40 years in law enforcement now to believe that uh, we're not going to see other incidents um, in, in around our society. One of the things I think people do not fully appreciate from the federal government side is our statutes based upon violation of civil rights and hate crimes, they're premised on a fact that you must prove that an individual willfully deprived somebody of their civil rights or did something to them because of their religion, their race, um, their sexuality. And that's a tough burden sometimes. Um, I can't comment on the case in North Carolina because as some of you, I'm sure, have followed the, the news. Um, the United States Department of Justice is investigating that. And people don't understand when I go to speak, many times I have to clear it from D.C. because the way that our system is set up, we have a governor and he speaks for the people of the state. We have our congressional representatives and they speak for the people of the state, but their Congress. We have our judicial members um, who are in the federal courts. But I am the highest ranking member of the executive office that's stationed in the state, um, the Department of Justice. So anything that I say, they're afraid that I'm going to be saying something that binds the entire United States. Um, I'm hoping I have enough experience not to do that. But I, I, I'm not even allowed to teach at the University of Delaware, where I taught for 30 years because I have this position. And, uh, but what I think we really need is, I can speak to groups like this all day long. You're never my problem. None of you are going to go out and commit hate crimes. But what we really truly need to do is find a way to reach out to those groups that really do not like us. And I wish there was a way we could tone down our rhetoric. Um, I read every day the New York Post. I read the New York Times, I read their journal. And the reason I read the New York Post is because it's nothing more, in my opinion, than a hate rag. Every single day, there's never a good word about Muslims, there's never a good word about the president, and the front page of the New York Post today is a picture of the President of the United States with a gag over his mouth because he did not use the word Muslim when he was talking about eradicating terrorists. If you've read any part of his speech, you read New York Times, he was very, very clear of what he meant to do. And when you say you're going to eradicate certain group of people who are the terrorists, you do not need to throw the word in to say they're Muslim any more than you need to say members of the Ku Klux Klan profess to be Christians. Um, but you see that, and papers like that have circulations of millions. And when you listen to the radio and the talk shows and uh, these page groups that come out, it's no wonder our young people grow up and want to reach out and do these things. So I'm not as optimistic that there's a remedy or panacea. It, it frustrates me in my law enforcement career 
to see how we are unable to even keep firearms from the hands of people who shouldn't have them. And we are not getting far. In fact, in fact, it appears we're even losing and stepping backwards in that area. And nothing frustrates me more to see that these groups do not see a greater picture of the good that we can have by reaching out. So what I would say in my message is that while well, prosecution is the last end, um, Jeff Rising and Joint Terrorism Task Force, they're out there to protect everybody's rights. We're not out there to Joint Terrorism Task Force just to chase down or look for perhaps supposed to be Muslim extremists. We're looking for all extremists, people that want to eat because of who you are. So I hope we can reach out and I would only say this, I had two examples in my life, and I will use it because I think it give a broader perspective. There was a woman that lived near me, and she was president of the Right to Life in Delaware. I'm pro-choice. Now, I understand there's a great difference between the two sides. This woman was a good woman. She took in unwed mothers. She had a belief, and it was a very strong belief. And we found areas that we could agree upon, and we found some areas we didn't agree upon. But we didn't dislike each other. And what was really interesting, this woman is now in her 80s. She called me about three months ago now. And she has a personal issue and some problems that have come up. Her husband is now deceased. And I asked her, why are you calling me? And she said, you're the only person I can trust. And that says a lot if you can get out and reach out. When I ran for attorney general a number of years ago, I got a failing grade from the NRA. NRA. The NRA went around where my children went to school and they put up stickers and said, Dump Oberly, sponsored by the National Rifle Association Victory Fund. All around my kids' school. My kids were 10 or 11 years old. I mean, you know, they're going to get ridiculed, they're going to have kids say things. But I never turned down an opportunity to speak to the NRA. I didn't win them over. But I did make friends with a couple people, and one of them became a very good friend of mine. And uh, we saw that if we had a dialogue, we could lessen the tension. So my charge to you all would be, if you have an opportunity to reach out, to meet with other groups that you know probably are not supportive of you, um, they have disagreements with your lifestyle or your beliefs, reach out to them. I live in a neighborhood now that is the most eclectic, um, diverse neighborhood, I think, in the state of Delaware. I'm a minority in my neighborhood, and my neighborhood is a very nice neighborhood. Um, and uh, it's been wonderful for my children to experience what we've experienced with our neighbors and our children and the different religions. And that's a good thing. So my advice, and my five minutes are surely up by now, is reach out. It's not going to come from us. We can't solve the problem. But the problems that exist can be solved with your help and reaching out. But we're here for you. And as long as I am given the opportunity to serve the people of the state as your U.S. Attorney, we will be here and we will reach out to you. We will continue to have forums and sometimes only two or three people show up sometimes. Um, but I've shown up and Bob has been there and we will come to your schools and we want to reach out and we want to have understanding. So I thank you for letting me be here. I'm going to stay here as long as I can. Thank you very much.